Hello, YouTube. Rick Farah checking in from Briarville, the repair and restoration shop at Joe Case Pipes. Hey, let's start this thing off right. Here's my Nording. What a shock. But what's in it is... How many old guys like me... And maybe even some of you, some of the uh, uh, younger folk out there, have you ever heard of Bengal Slices? It was a fabulous tobacco in the 80s. And I really, it was one of my favorites back then when I was uh, just a young buck. Well, it went out of business in the 80s. And uh, that was kind of sad because all of a sudden you couldn't get stuff anymore. The prices skyrocketed on the uh, uh, now on the auction sites for the some of that old stuff that's uh, never been opened in the tins. As you know, I think I was out there just looking around, just curious the other day. It was like a hundred and forty dollars for a tin of this stuff. Well. A couple of friends of mine and clients uh, created Standard Tobacco of uh, Pennsylvania. Simon and Dan over there are working on this. Now, Simon's a big shot British lawyer, that uh, uh, acquisition attorney, and he acquired the patents for four fabulous tobaccos, one of which was Bengal Slices. He also got the patents for the John Cotton series. It's, uh, uh, there are three, uh, three blends, John Cotton 1, John Cotton 1 and 2, and John Cotton Smyrna. Those tobaccos are available for pre-order right now on pipesandcigars.com. They, 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 they match the artwork on the tins. They, uh, uh, and I'll put a picture of it so you can see what I'm talking about. Better yet, just go out to... Uh, uh, the Briarville Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Briarville. And I've got the pictures of the new tens out there. Also in a review of the uh, John Cotton series uh, from Pipes and uh, Cigars. But uh, they're working with a uh, uh, tobacconist, and, and for the life of me, I've, I forgot his name, and I didn't bother to look it up before starting this video. This just... Uh, uh, Suffice it to say, uh, they did very well because the Bengal slices tastes hauntingly the same as it did uh, back then. I mean, it was like a ghost that uh, has returned, hence hauntingly. <laughs> did you catch that? <laughs> it's fantastic stuff. So moving along, working with this tobacconist <clears throat> to recreate the recipes and Lane uh, Tobacco, of course, you know, everybody's heard of Lane, Lane 1Q, Captain Black, they're the largest tobacco uh, manufacturer in the country uh, out of Georgia. They're uh, putting it all together for them and pipes and cigars are distributing for it. And Simon, kudos to you for putting all that together. Uh, and uh, quit throwing your meerschaums at your secretary, so you're keeping me way too busy. Uh, kudos to them, because they nailed it, guys. And if you really like these success stories and something you may want to try yourself, try these tobaccos, because they, they did a fabulous job. Now, these are just the industry samples he sent out to me. The tins are only available right now for the John Cotton series, and the others will be released at the first of the year. So, you know, uh, and Simon and Dan, congratulations on that. I mean, you guys, it's just, I, I know, you know, I've been talking to you about it for a year now, and uh, and it's finally come to fruition, and I think I, I think that's uh, just, just a testimony to you guys' hard work and and, uh, and a success we, uh, we really admire here at Briarville. Anyway, I did want to shout out to my buds over there and for doing a fine job with all of this. Set that over there. I'm going to put some more. I'm almost out. I'm going to put some more of that in here in just a sec. Mm, 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 mm. One thing I wanted to show you, something that comes into the shop from time to time, something that happens to all of us from time to time, and I'm going to need a stunt pipe to show you to, to start this thing off with. 
because like a bonehead, I forgot to take the, the before shots. And please, I know, I get it, guys. I get all your emails. I get all your comments. You want to see more of the before stuff instead of the after stuff. But I'm a bonehead. I forget. I get excited about the project and forget to take the shot. And so, anyway, <laughs> suffice it to say, it wasn't quite this bad. <laughs> it's our poor stunt pipe here. <laughs> but it did have the same problem. Uh... On the shank, uh, Ryan in uh, Missouri uh, dropped his pipe and obviously it hit wrong and like it's happened to all of us, the, the shank broke, everything broke, it just went nuts. Favorite pipe, what do you do? Well, you send it to old Rick is what you do. So, actually there was a couple of them it had the same problem. I guess, well, never mind. I'll keep my those comments to myself. But there's a couple of ways to approach this, which is why I wanted to bring it up. The first way on this first one, uh, it's a little stand well, and it's a, it's a, it's a nice little, uh, uh, you know, just a few minute smoker. I mean, you probably do a bowl in this little acorn in probably 15, 20 minutes. And, uh, fits very nicely in your pocket and uh, but its downfall it, it is very light and it is very thin and and then the uh, uh, the shank broke on it so what we did is we just simply on this one is just cut it back just past the break and uh, and then refit the uh, the mortise and uh, or resize the mortise to where it would take it we got lucky because on this one anyway because as you know a lot of times the shanks will taper down you know towards the stem and the uh, and then the stem will have to be replaced because the the original stem would be too small as we proceeded into the uh, thickness of the uh, into the thickness of the shank but this one as you can see was there's not there wasn't a lot of taper there we were able to uh, uh, just match it up pretty good but one of the problems was and we'll get it up here so you can see uh, is that this was a stand well this is a stand well and we the break got into the stamping which also weakens that spot right there uh, which could have contributed to the break in the first place but cutting it back removed the stand and left the well and i didn't want to uh i didn't want it to look like it was repair i wanted the pipe to look like it was uh was brand new again i think we pretty much accomplished that i just rusticated out the uh, uh the the stamping that was right there and then we uh, recontrast dyed it uh, to bring out the the lovely grain that's in this thing and uh, and make it pop a little more. So it's got a little new re rustication. Uh, just had to basically clean up the stem, and then I colored the uh, colored the uh, uh, the S, the Stanwell S, in there, and uh, made it pop a little bit. And it came out very very nice, uh, and certainly worthy of the uh, of the rotation. And uh, and that will be uh, that will be heading back next week. There was a there's another one. <clears throat> we had to take a little different approach. The uh, the break was was rather large, and we had to take quite a bit of the shank off. And I thought that it would have looked funny. I didn't think the uh, I didn't think the pipe would uh, keep the same characteristic that nice smooth uh, 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 flow and the lines there with it with it being short, shortened. So what I did is I, fa I uh, fashioned an, uh, an acrylic uh, mortise for it and a uh, shank extension, and we, uh, we uh, put that in there. And we just used some, uh, some tortoise that we had here around the shop. Not, <laughs> not the little reptile, <laughs> but the tortoise acrylic. 
<laughs> no, PETA, stay off my back this time, all right? We were talking about the acrylic, not the little things we like to eat. Uh, anyway, so uh, this uh, was in pretty tough, rough shape. This looked a little more close to our stunt pipe than it, what it does now. And uh, it had, uh, when this one was dropped, it also had a crack that went across there. It created a crack that went across there. So that was a challenge we had to uh, get rid of. And as you can see, uh, we did that. Uh, getting everything to match up in size, we had to uh, re-rusticate, re sand down this and uh, some and re-rusticate it. And then we uh, uh, just matched the stem back to what we've done. And as you can see, the rim was shot too. The rim, the rim literally did look like that, you know. So, so we uh, we went ahead and uh, took care of that while we were doing that. But the goal was is to get the uh, the pipe worthy of the rotation, and I think we accomplished that. So there you have it. Sometimes uh, give you a little tip to uh, a, a, a real tip this time. Sometimes the uh, 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 the uh, stems will go in there and not fit very well and squeak and sound like you know, and feel like they're going to break. Well, you can lubricate those. And <clears throat> the way we do it here in the shop is we basically use beeswax. You can pick it up at a hobby store. But uh, clean off the tenon and clean off the mortise uh, with using uh, some... Uh, uh, denatured alcohol, not the isopropyl, but the denatured. The isopropyl leave a, leave a residue. And uh, uh, just put a little uh, put a little beeswax. Not a lot, because you can crack a shank. And let me tell you, I'm serious about that. Don't use a lot of this, and be very very careful, because if you get crazy with it and crack a shank, I don't I don't want to hear your complaints. You know, you've been warned right now. Just get just, but just a little tiny bit, and you can see what I'm talking about there. All right. There's not going to be much of a chance to crack this shank because it's, as you know, it's acrylic. But it did kind of squeak a little bit. So you put just a little bit, and guys, I'm serious, a little bit, you'll crack the shank if you don't. Lord knows. I do. And just put it in there, and then just lubricate the inside of the mortise and that squeaking goes away there is a uh, so you can tell it's there's no and it, it makes it fit nice it's lubricated don't use too much of it I'm serious about that y'all are you gonna go put it in there and it's gonna crack and you're gonna be pissed off because you're gonna have to send it to me to band it and you need to avoid that another way to do it is uh <clears throat> which i don't use here in the shop but uh i've I've heard other people uh say that they can pull the uh the stem out and use a lead pencil uh use the graphite and the lead to also lubricate your uh the mortise tenon fit you might and try that first and see if it uh if that helps <clears throat> and then you don't have to go to the hobby store pick up the beeswax So there you have it. Just a quick video. Say hey. Thanks so much for the business. Uh, keep it coming. Uh, we are as close as your mailbox, as you know. Time to get your collection up in shape. We like doing the service work as opposed to the repair work because we know you're pissed when your pipes break. But when you want them to come back looking like new and just because they're nasty, Send them in. <laughs> We're as close as your mailbox. <laughs> anyway, you guys are a lot of fun. Thanks so much for all the businesses. And, and as much as my brother-in-law cringes every time I say it, this is Briarville, the repair and restoration shop at Joe Case Pipes. Check out his website. Talk to you later. Oh.